Ladies and gentlemen, it is wonderful to see all of your smiling faces. Today we're going to be talking about an artist named Paul Clay. Here are some pictures that Paul Clay painted. And here's what I want you to notice about all of these pictures. Notice that they are all built out of basic, simple, geometric shapes. What shapes do you see? Squares? Triangles? Rectangles? Maybe some circles? These paintings also include lots of shapes that are split into smaller ones. Take a look at this square. Notice that it is broken into two triangles. In this painting, the squares, triangles, rectangles, and other shapes all come together to look like something. What is it? What does this look like? It's a castle. In a lot of Paul Clay's paintings, he puts these shapes together to look like buildings, like a village, or a town, or a castle, or something similar to that. So now that we've gotten some inspiration from Paul Clay, we're going to jump right into our paper and do something very similar. So what I'm going to do here is, just like Paul Clay built with shapes, put shapes together to create a picture of something, what I'm going to do is the same kind of concept. So maybe we've all done this before, where we just use a, a square or a rectangle with a triangle on top. And that looks like a house, of course, right? And I can put a chimney on it, and I can use another shape for the door. What shape is that? A rectangle, maybe a dot for a doorknob. I could put squares for the windows and maybe I'll put lines through the squares to break those into smaller shapes, right? That's how we normally think about drawing a house, but most houses aren't just one section with a roof. Most houses, there's like a garage that sticks off to this side, and then maybe there's two stories, or maybe it's a wider house, like a rectangle instead of a square, or maybe uh, it has like a back section and a front section. Houses are not usually square in shape. They got a lot of different things going on. And especially if we're talking about really fancy houses like mansions or castle type things, this is not gonna cut it. So this might work. I could draw a whole bunch of houses like that if I wanted a village, but if I want a castle, I'm going to piece together a whole bunch of shapes just like Paul Clay did. So maybe I will start with a rectangle because Castles are built out of like stone blocks that are big rectangle stones. And then I'll put a whole bunch of these rectangles together to make a castle wall. Some of them might be bigger, more like squares. Some of them might be shorter, skinnier. They can come in lots of different sizes and styles. Just like if you were actually to look at a real castle, not all the stones are the same size. And while I'm drawing these, I can also start to think about splitting them up into smaller shapes just for funsies. So like I could draw a triangle inside of that square. I could draw a line diagonally through that square which splits it into two triangles. I could draw a line vertically through that which splits that into two smaller rectangles or horizontally which splits that one rectangle into two smaller rectangles. There's really no wrong way to do it. Just have fun breaking the big shapes down into smaller shapes. Alright, now I have finished most of that 
front castle wall, but I left this middle section empty here because there's something I wanted to show you. Normally when you think about a castle wall, you think there's like a big gate right at the entryway to the castle. Now here in my picture, I've got, um, you know, where that is, I've, I've kind of already filled it in with boxes and that's okay. I don't need to try to erase it or start over. What I'm gonna do is right at the top of this, make a semicircle. And then I can just split that with some vertical lines. And then any of these other shapes in here too, I can add some vertical lines. That will kind of help to make this area here feel like it is that gate. We call it a portcullis, that, that thing that raises up and down to close off so that people can get, get in and out or, or not get in and out if you need to defend your castle. And then I'm gonna finish up making the front of my castle wall here. And I, I do want to break up some of these big shapes into small shapes. I didn't do much of that over here. I did a bunch over here. Um, now up on top of a castle wall, you'll see something called machiculations. Wah -ha -ha. It's a hard word to say and I don't expect you to learn this word, but these are the part that sticks up and out from the castle wall so that if you are trying to defend the castle wall, people could stand up at the top and they could shoot arrows through the, the gaps between and, and they could also shoot them down uh, through, through the holes in the floor of the matriculations. Now to draw that here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw boxes and then leave a gap and then make a box and then leave a gap and then make a box and then leave a gap, make a box, leave a gap, make a box, leave a gap, make a box, leave a gap, make a box and it can hang off the edge if you want. Now, that pattern across the top of our castle wall makes it look a lot more like an actual castle. In fact, if I wanted, I could even draw in some people standing on the castle wall defending my castle. If I'm standing up on the castle wall defending the castle, what, what weapon might I use to protect the castle? Probably a bow and arrow. So, how would I draw a bow and arrow? A capital D, that's the bow. And then the arrow would be a line with a point, and the back of it would have some feathers. So if I wanted to draw a whole bunch of archers defending my castle, I could do that. The letter D, a line, a point, and some feathers. Now I just drew stick people here because it's quick and it kind of goes along with the theme of this line drawing. If you wanted to draw more realistic people with faces on there, you could. You could give them hair or helmets. Now, what might be up in the sky? We need to think about this whole page and we've kind of got this big empty space up here. Up in the sky above our castle, Maybe there would be a sun. That's easy to draw, it's just a circle, right? There might be clouds. The way I draw clouds is a straight line for the bottom of the cloud, and then a bumpy, bumpy, bumpy on the top of the cloud. There might be birds. To draw birds, we just draw kind of a widened out curvy V. A what? Well, it's super easy. Just watch this one more time. It's like I make the letter V, except I make the top parts of the V curve way out. It's like a letter V, but the top parts of the V curve out. It's almost like a, an M, except that notice the ends of the wings don't come down as far as the middle. So it's almost like writing the letter M but not quite. I think of it more like the letter V with curvy outs. Anyway, that's all there is to it to make a castle 
is sort of inspired by Paul Clay. Now going back to Paul Clay, look at how he used color in some of these paintings. This one is all reds, and yeah, there's other colors in there too, like green and purple and yellow, but mostly it's different kinds of reds. Now, in your marker box, you might only have one red marker, or in your crayon box, you might only have one or two different kinds of red. But, you could reuse that color in lots of different places. Notice that Paul Clay's paintings don't necessarily look like real life. This one's all red, but a castle in real life would be more grays and browns because it's made out of rocks and it's dirty. But take a look at these color ideas that Paul Clay came up with, and then see what kind of creative coloring you can come up with for your castle.